So the other day we were talking about how Batgirl got axed, and one of the things that had come up was the possibility that this was just part of the greater vision. And so here we have some uh, information about that very thing, the next 10 years, in fact. And you're probably seeing a lot of coverage on this, so we thought we'd throw our two cents in as well, just to, uh, you know, ride the coattails of the trend. <laughs> we got an article here from The Wrap called Warner Brothers to enact a 10-year plan for DC Films. We think we could make it better. I like the idea of making things better. I mm -hmm. like the idea of having a plan. What I don't like is the statement. I should like it because it's honest. We think we could make it better. It doesn't sound overconfident. Yeah. We think. Right. We could make it better, as opposed to, we can make it better! Just days after killing a nearly completed Batgirl film, Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Saslov, how do you say that name? I'm not sure. Saslov. It sounds like the name of a supervillain. Saslov! Discussed his overall plan for DC films going forward on Thursday's earnings call. You look at Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, these are brands that are known everywhere in the world. And the ability to drive those all over the world with great story is a big opportunity for us. We have done a reset. We've, we've, re we've restructured the business. We're going to focus where there will be a team with a 10-year plan focusing just on DC. These are good ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in, yeah. in theory, mm. his model for how to run DC going forward is inspired by how former Disney CEO Bob Iger and former Disney chief creative officer Alan Horn empowered Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige to build the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is very transparent. Look, Marvel did it right. Just like Instagram's like, look at TikTok, man. All videos now, baby. Yeah. You saw how that went, it was smooth sailing. I like his transparency. I like that he's calling, he's basically putting it out there point blank. He's like, look, they did a good job. I'd like for us to make the money they're making. That simple. Now they just have to find the DC equivalent of Kevin Feige, which I feel like is probably not an easy task. Kevin Feige just has a love and understanding for Marvel and the, the content there. This is true. That he can kind of look ahead and project and see into the future and, and kind of create a roadmap, if you will. Now they have to find someone to do that for DC. I feel like they should just go to Feige and offer him one billion dollars. They've never tried tapping a visionary person from Disney and bringing them over to DC. Oh my God, stop giving them ideas. That's a joke. <laughs> We saw what happened with Justice League. No, they have to find someone else who has the passion for DC that Kevin Feige has for Marvel yeah. and money. It's very similar to the structure that Alan Horn and Bob Iger put together very effectively with Kevin Feige at Disney. We think that we could build a long-term, much stronger, sustainable growth business out of DC, and as part of that, we're gonna focus on quality. This is exactly what I think a lot of people have been hoping for for a while, is this sort of attitude, like, yo, we need to get our shit together and think about the long-term plan to build towards the same exact kind of thing in terms of DC that Marvel has done. While I agree with that, uh -huh. the messaging is great. I can't help feeling uh, some sort of way, like heartbroken for the people who work so hard on these projects to then suddenly have them be axed right when the finish line is in sight. You know, we're gonna forget about it probably, maybe. I don't know. I, it's tricky. We're not asking about that Star Wars 1313 game anymore, whatever it was called. Oh. Before Disney bought Star Wars, there was this game in development that looked amazing and everyone was super excited about it. Got axed as soon as the merge happened. This is something that happens a lot during mergers, like when Disney bought Fox, a lot of things kind of fell through the cracks. It's not out of the ordinary for this type of stuff to happen. Everybody knows that when a co two companies merger, a bunch of people are gonna be losing jobs. Yeah. And so, yeah, I guess this kind of makes sense. Says Love continued addressing the axing of Batgirl by saying, we're not going to release any film before it's ready. We're not going to release a film to make a quarter. The focus is gonna be how do we make each of these films in general as good as possible. But DC is something that we think we could make better and we're focused on it now. You know, I gotta say I'm liking this attitude. I mean, obviously this is all talk, but so far. Why is it that that last sentence kind of creeps me out? But DC is something that we think we could make better and we're focused on it now. It almost feels like when you've been kind of just like doing your own thing for a bit and then suddenly your parents are like, I'm watching you now. And you're like, huh? Uh, I'm not following your logic uh, there. Okay, never mind. I thought you were going somewhere else completely. Like you had you had a kid, and then you have another one. You're like, well, we screwed up this one. We worked out the kinks. Gonna do this one right. That one's a lost cause. I just like the attitude in his in what he's saying. He's not saying that he's got all the ideas. He's all saying the answers, he's saying yeah. we need to find the group and we have to assemble 
a team of events. The CEO called out Dwayne Johnson's upcoming Black Adam as a DC film he's excited about, with the Shazam and Aquaman sequels also on tap. With Sazloff taking a closer look at the Warner Brothers Pictures portfolio, course correcting DC is a priority, and part of that plan involves planning out the next 10 years of DC films. Warner Brothers Discovery went into its first earnings report as a merged company on Thursday. The company's revenue had missed Wall Street's analysts' expectations by nearly $2 billion. Obviously, it's really early, and this is, we're in the very very, very infancy of this sort of thing that's happening. Obviously, we got movies coming out and whatnot, but still, like, here's this dude that's coming in going, okay, I have a vision for how this could go. He's not saying, this is what it's gotta be, but he's certainly making moves as, as if he is. Like, Axe Batgirl, that could work. <laughs> I like his vision for it because if you just watch, you know, what Marvel was doing and then what DC was trying to do, I feel like everyone can see this. It just felt like a game of catch up over it and over again. It still feels like a game of catch up to yes, be fair. Yes, but it doesn't feel as impulsive. It doesn't feel as, you know, oh, quick, just start writing checks. Zack Snyder, you handle it. Make a cinematic universe, go quick. I feel like this is more thought out and this is more clear headed, like, okay, Let's pump the brakes a little bit. Let's take our time instead of throwing more good money after bad. Try to like assemble a group of people to help us do this right. Could it be that this is a bunch of talk designed to get shareholders excited because it looks like someone has finally come in and they're like cleaning house, taking care of business, saying all the things that shareholders want to hear, axing, uh, you know, a nearly hundred million dollar film like Batgirl in order to get, you know, tax back or tax breaks or whatever. Is it just uh, a money man trying to make things seem appealing to the shareholders? It very well could be. I, you know, I'm not sure. You know, this sort of age old classic thing you hear about from the film industry, which is the money people trying to, the men in suits yeah. trying to make decisions and oftentimes their decisions are bad. This feels like an instance where you have a guy in a suit who's, who is making like like big decisions, axing a huge film, right? But he's going, I don't have all the answers. I want us to have people that will help us get those answers. That feels like a completely different attitude than, oh, uh, we're smart, we, you know, I, I can be a cook in the kitchen, I can make some good decisions too. People in suits will come in and just sort of ruin a movie. And it feels like he genuinely wants things to be better. Obviously, I'm drawing all this from some text and an article it's not much to go off of. I haven't ever spoken to the guy. I can say that I'm excited about what I'm seeing here. But saying that, they've had so much success with the one-offs, like all of the ones that they were listing in the article, like, oh, the Joker, not part of the continuity. The Batman, not part of the continuity. I'm like, okay, well, if that's working for you, why don't you just make a bunch of really great one-off movies? Uh, because there is a lot of money to be made in an interconnected universe. Like, sure. I think that what you're talking about is very valid and they should continue to do that because that's not something we're getting from Marvel. Yeah. However, I feel like there is a cow to be milked out of an interconnected universe. There's something about that where people feel like they have to consume all the content to get all of the story. Sure, and, and even on that level, people will continue to consume even subpar yeah. uh, co content just in order to keep up because you're already invested. We'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below and who do you think? I feel like they should go to the mailroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Go to the mailroom and go, who likes DC? In It'd this? be like a really great origin story. You know, yeah. Zaslav just walks in like uh, like, like uh, J.K. Simmons and Whiplash. <laughs> I need someone. You. I need a drummer. A DC drummer.